Hi everyone and welcome to today's tutorial. I'm going to do a really quick breakdown on compositing in After Effects and Blender. So to save a bit of time I'm going to use a model I made for an upcoming short film. But basically what I'm going to show you how to do today is turn a 3D model from Blender into something that you can composite into a live action piece of footage. Okay, so that's the animation done. Literally just sort of flies in, hovers around a bit, the engines do a bit of movement. One of the important things uh, that I've done with the texturing is that uh, the inside of the engines have an emission texture. And I made this sort of grainy noise texture so that they're not just complete light. So on the inside, there's sort of darker spots and lighter spots. Kind of gives it like a weird sort of magma -y look to the engines, which I think is quite cool. And they've got a bit of a blue tint to them. So basically, this is our setup. I've got a few lights here. So we've got this sort of nice orangey backlight and a blue sort of fill light here. Um, so we've got some nice contrast going on there with the colors. So let's go over export settings. Things. A couple of really important things you want to do, obviously uh, set your frame rate and everything over here. So I set it to 25 frames per second at 1080p. Uh, the output, you can put it wherever you want. And then this is where it gets a bit important. Obviously, if we're compositing this onto live action footage, you want the background to be transparent. So down here, you go under Film and click Transparent. And to get the transparency, there's only a few file types you can actually use. One of them is the EXR one, which I'm going to use for this tutorial. You can also use PNG, and I think there's another few. Uh, I think AVI Raw also has it. If you don't plan on changing much in After Effects, you can go for PNG. But if you want to do what I'm going to be doing next, which is messing around in After Effects with things like the emission pass and the reflective pass and all sorts, you want to have EXR multi-layer enabled and um, basically what that does is it breaks down all the different light passes and things into separate render layers for you automatically so you can change the reflections and the amount of light and how diffuse things are and the ambient occlusion and everything afterwards so if you're going to use the EXR multi-layer then select that uh, here and I'm going to set it to float full and zip lossless and make sure you've got RGBA selected instead of RGB or black and white basically the difference is this last one has the alpha channel which is what represents the transparency another thing I always do is animate the noise seed and what that does if I hit render quickly again you can see all these little like fireflies that are appearing here and that's noise what this does is for every frame it will randomize where the noise is so instead of having a block of just pixels that kind of look all funny and uh, are very grainy this will actually change where they are so it looks a bit more organic because the noise is constantly changing and the last thing I always turn on is motion blur because without motion blur it kind of loses that realism so when the UFO is flying in here we want there to be a bit of motion blur because it's coming in quite quickly and the last thing you want to do is go into your render layers tab and make sure you've got all of these things selected you can kind of pick and choose if you know what you're doing if you don't probably just follow what I'm doing here but basically I have all these four at the bottom selected I have combined and Z and then I select all of these here essentially this is uh, the sort of flat material the reflections uh, any see-through stuff so like glass and subsurfaces sort of skin textures so you're basically breaking down all the different levels so you can control them individually when you take it into After Effects it's a bit complicated now but you'll see once I show you in a minute so now I'm just gonna go over here I'm gonna set my render output and in here I'm just gonna call it UFO hit accept and I'm going to set my samples to like, uh, let's go 75. Normally I wouldn't go this low, but because it's a tutorial, I don't want to sit here all day and wait for it to render. Okay, so I didn't render the whole thing because I'm too impatient for this rubbish. But basically, we have the UFO rendered out. We're probably going to be working from one frame in After Effects anyway, so that doesn't really matter. So we're going to leave Blender now. I'm going to open After Effects. First thing I'm going to do is bring in the EXR render. And you want to make sure that Open EXR Sequence is checked. It's probably going to be selected by default, but all that does is it turns all these individual frames that are rendered out into a video file. So import and then uh, drag this into a new composition. And by default, it will be black the whole way through. There will be literally nothing. And that's because we haven't told After Effects what to do with the EXR sequence yet. So the first thing we want to do is use a plugin called Extractor. And this is what lets you sort of interpret the EXRs. So if you click on this box up here and go to Layers, we can do Composite Combined. And this basically turns all the different render layers we can see here. We've got the, the glossy, the ambient occlusion, the depth field, uh, all sorts. That makes it into all one image. So we press OK and we have a UFO and for some reason it's really dark and it took me a long time to figure this out but you need to add something called a color profile converter and set it to linearize input to get it back to the color that you see in Blender. So you can see this is how it looked when we rendered it out of Blender but without the color profile converter it looks like this for some reason. No idea why but there you go. So technically you're, you're kind of done at this point if you rendered it out of Blender how you pretty much want to see it in the final result then you are done. But there are a few things I did like leaving these lights white because I wanted to actually affect what they look like in After Effects. So one of the things I'm going to do with the EXR multi-layer is duplicate this UFO. I'm going to call it under lights and I'm just going to select the emission pass from the uh, render layers. So it's render layer dot emit and press OK. And this should, yeah, there we go. So we just have the lights. And at this point, I can do pretty much whatever I want to them. I'm going to set the lights to add so that we can see them on top of the footage. I'm going to add a, uh, not a glow, a fast blur legacy to it. And I'm going to do repeat edge pixels. And let's go for like a, let's start with a two. And then we'll do maybe like a five. And then like a 20. 
there we go. So you can see it adds like a really nice bloom sort of effect to the engine lights, uh, but I don't want them to be white. And the reason I left them white in Blender is that I can change them in After Effects. And I'm gonna do that with a color, color balance. Yeah, there we go, color balance. So let's say we wanted the lights to be a bit blue. I'll change them to a blue light with turning up the blue highlights. So now you can see we have some nice glowing blue uh, lights on the bottom of our UFO. So say I wanted to do something else, let's quickly duplicate the UFO layer again and put it above here. Let's call this ambient occlusion. Uh, and this is basically the shadows and the way sort of light interacts with the model. So on its own you can see we have this. And if I set this to multiply, which get rid of the white, so if I added the curves to this, I can affect the shadows on the model without affecting the highlights with the curves uh, filter. So if I turn this down, you can see, unless I push it really far like this, we don't actually affect um, the sort of bright parts of the image at all. It's literally just making the shadows darker. Whereas if I did this to a normal image that's not um, just selecting the shadows, it would just crush the whole image to black. So really, really cool. This is my sort of method of choice really for exporting from Blender to After Effects. It works for me. It works very well. I haven't actually found any problems with it. There's probably millions of ways of doing it. Uh, but this is a tried and tested method that I found that I use in all my short films. Hope you guys found this tutorial useful. I'm planning on doing quite a lot more tutorials in the near future. Um, people have said that they really enjoy them. They want to see more. So I'll try and make some more. If there's something you want to see, put it down in the comments below. And until next time, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.